To download the calibration curve workbook, go to the Unique Tech website. From there, go to Dellen Press Enhancements, then scroll down to the Micrometer Powder Bar Kit. To download a copy of the calibration curves, click here. Save. And I'm going to save it into the folder called Micrometer. I'm going to save it with the name given by the download dialog box. I'm going to go into the Micrometer folder. I'm going to scan it for potential viruses. And the way I do it on my computer is I right click File, Norton Security, Scan Now. So now I want to close my antivirus software. I want to open up the template. First thing we're going to do is save this as a workbook. So file, save as, browse. I'm going to go to the micrometer folder. And we're going to change file type to Excel workbook. Now at this point, it's not going to be a template, so you can give it a different name. This is the one that I want to use and copy over to other calibration workbooks. I'm just going to call it master. Up in here, I want to remove powder, powder bar. I'm actually going to change the word brass to caliber. As you can see, when you download it, it actually just downloaded it as a protected worksheet. So to unprotect it, you go to review, unprotect sheet. And when we do that, it starts flagging these cells as having an issue. This is probably going to be the adjacent cells don't have any values. We're not going to worry about that. I'm going to go back in here and change brass to caliber. Insert a row. So highlight the row, right click it, insert. I'm going to highlight these, go to home. Click Format Painter, paint these two cells, or we'll label that as Micrometer. Now, if you only have one micrometer, you don't need to do this, but when you work a calibration workbook, that workbook is unique, if you will, to a very specific micrometer installed in a very specific powder bar, and it's going to be to a specific powder. Well, I've just used simple letters, A, B, C, to identify my micrometers. So when I create one, I will put that identifying letter here. Don't need that yet. Here it's saying this data is dummy data, if you will. So we're not going to use it. Even if we were using Win231 powder, you want to remove this because you need to do your own measurements. And we're not going to clear this data because this is a formula. So clear contents, and now we're going to save it. And we're going to close it, and there is our master workbook. So now we're going to create a workbook specific to a powder micrometer. So I'm just going to copy this one, right click it, copy, right click, paste, rename, a calibration curve is specific to that powder bar and that micrometer and the powder. So that's how I want to identify this workbook. It's micrometer A, and the powder is Vitavori N310. And I've got other setups using bullseye powder and tight group powder. And I would have a separate calibration curve for each of them. So this will help me identify very easily which micrometer and the powder. So let's open this up. Okay, the powder is going to be Metavor N310. On powder bar, the original tint was which size powder bar? The extra small, small, large, magnum, so forth. I happen to know that this one is small. This tool head is set up for 45 ACP. And I've labeled that micrometer A note is no longer needed so I'm just actually just going to clear it out. Now let me explain the layout of the workbook. This of course is the micrometer settings and the intent is you fill your pop worth powder, run a bunch of charges through it. Typically I run a hundred charges through it to get the powder to settle. 
I'll then set the micrometer to zero. And what I do is I'll throw five charges and then I'll throw in the sixth charge to record it here. Then the seventh one goes here. Then the next, next, next. The workbook then averages those five and it uses the average in its curve. Now the way I actually do it, pour powder in the hopper. I run 100 charges through it. Of course, putting the powder back into the hopper. I'll set it for zero, run five charges through it. And then I will take my powder pan from my electronic scale and I'll take the next 10 charges, put it into that pan and weigh it. I will then divide that number by 10, which is easy. You're just moving the decimal place and I'll write that number here. So that number for me is in effect the average of 10 charges. So I'll do that here and then I'll go to the next micrometer setting and do the same thing. I actually don't fill in these columns. So essentially what the workbook does, I'll just take this number, copy it over here, and based on how I input the data, it's actually calculating the linear regression off an average of 10 charges per setting. And the way I do it, it sounds like it's a lot of extra work, and I find it actually just as fast as throwing a charge, weighing that one charge, throwing another charge, weighing that one charge, and so forth. I just throw 10 charges, put all 10 into the powder pan, weigh it once, and put that average here. And before we start actually recording charge weights, you're going to want to know an approximate range of the weights you're going to be using. And through most of your reloading, you're going to know that. For example, in my case, for this particular caliber powder and what this tool head is set up for as a target load, I'm going to be using anywhere between 3.5 to 4.5 grains. And the reason I want to know that is I start capturing. If I'm down in here and I'm already throwing like six grains of powder, I'm not going to keep going any further. I'm going to start recording. The way I do it, I start at zero, then I go to one, and then I go to two. If I hit a fair amount over that range, I will then come down inside there and start capturing some additional increments. But if after I've captured two, I still haven't reached the max amount of charge weight I tend to use, I'll go to three. So you you keep going until you're over your range. So that's why you need your range. There's absolutely no need to fill in every single cell here. So once we have the data in here, it'll calculate a linear regression for us, giving us a formula where we can then key in, let's say I want 4.1 grains of N310. The idea is I can key in 4.1 here and it'll give me a very close approximation of what my micrometer setting should be. So at this point, we're ready to print this out, go into reloading room, and fill this out. Now, because of the way I record the data, I only really need this because I'm just going to be filling out this column. But for those who are going to use the workbook kind of like the way it was intended, you'd want to highlight this because what you need is the cells key in your charge weights and to get the cells big enough i don't need to change font size or anything i just highlight what i need you go to print and where it says print active sheets i change that to print selection and then i want to change orientation to portrait and it's going to give me much larger cells to write in when I record the data. And then we just click print. There's a variety of markings on the micrometer. On the knob itself, it goes from 0 all the way around essentially to 25, but 0 and 25 are the same mark. You can think of these, each of these marks as an increment of 0 0.01. So that'll be 0, 0.01, 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.3, 0, 0.4, 0.5, all the way up to 0 0.25. On the top mark, you'll see major markings of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. In between the major markings, you'll see a hash mark at the halfway point. So that is read as 0, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. Underneath, the hash marks are quarter. So it's 0, 0.25. 0 0.5, 0 0.751, 1 1.25, 1 1.5, 1 1.75, and so forth. It takes four full turns of the knob to go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so forth. 
I'm showing a close up now, and in that close up, the micrometer is set to 0 0.81. Now, I came up with 0.81. If you look at the markings on the shaft underneath the line, you can see that the knob is past 0 0.75. And you can see that the knob is set to 0 0.06. So 0.75 plus 0 0.06 is 0 0.81. Now you've probably read where when you set the micrometer to whatever setting you want, do you go past it and then go back into it? Or do you go below it and slowly into it? What people are addressing when they do it that way is a concept known as lash or backlash or play. Now let me read to you and show on the screen what Unique Tech says about the backlash in the micrometer. The MIC micrometer is built with a spring washer between the tip of the micrometer shaft and the adapter bushing, so it has zero backlash. So that means it doesn't really matter which one you do or if you do it differently each time. Now for those who are not familiar with backlash, let me just use a simple toy. This is a toy bolt, and this is a toy nut. And if I hold the nut, you can see that the bolt moves back and forth within the nut. That's because there's a gap between the threads of the bolt and the threads of the nut. That gap is known as backlash, sometimes lash, sometimes plight. So those things that have lash, if you want to be consistent, then you would always end up turning it in a certain direction, either past it and back down, or down and back up. That way the lash is always in the same side of the bolt threads. So in my setup, if I was overly concerned with lash, if you look at powder bar, you can see that it slowly goes back when the case is charged. Look at the force when it comes forward. So if there was lash in here, what I would want, because of the force coming forward, I would want the th threads of the bolt up against the threads of the nut so that the backlash is on this side of the contact point. Now the way to do that with this micrometer is you essentially want to be pushing the bar in. So if I wanted it set there, I would go past it which pushes the bar out, and then I'll slowly come back into it, which pushes the bar, this bar forward. Another thing you want to keep in mind when adjusting the micrometer is I always adjust it when the powder bar is empty. Obviously, if there's powder in the bar and you try to decrease it, you're actually trying to crush the powder. Just to be consistent, I always drop the powder and then change the micrometer. And now that you got a powder bar and micrometer installed, you want to fill your hopper with powder. You want to run a bunch of charges through it. I typically run 100 charges through it to get the powder to settle. At that point, we're ready to fill out the worksheet. And what I do first is set it to zero. All right, to set it to zero, drop the handle, to dump the powder into an empty case. Now when you set it to zero, don't try to go past zero. It should just stop right there. Yes, if you keep turning it, you can force it past it, but you're actually going to end up possibly breaking your micrometer. Now at this point, I want to empty this powder. Now I want to throw five charges. I'm going to dump the powder back in here. What I do is whenever I change the micrometer setting, I always throw five charges, dump the powder back into the hopper, and then I start measuring. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is what I do when I actually start doing measurements. I would throw a charge, put it in here. Throw the next one, put it in here. Throw eight more, put it in here. Then I would go away this. Take the average of those 10, record it there, and then go to the next major marking. So let's throw 10 charges for setting zero.
That's 10 charges. Let's go see how much it weighs. All right, those 10 charges weighed 17.62. The average of those 10 charges, of course, will be 1.762. So I'm going to write 1.762 in that cell. Now, I don't know if you can see it. If you recall, I labeled this micrometer A. Well, there's my A right there. I'm then going to empty the powder bar. I want to set the micrometer to a setting of 1.0. If you recall, that'll be four full turns. Put this powder back into the hopper. Now what I want to do is take five charges, put them back into the hopper. Then I'm going to take 10 charges, put them all in the powder pan, weigh that and get that average. So in micrometer setting one, those 10 charges weigh 38.04. Obviously the average is 3.804. Right next to the one, I'm going to write 3.804. So the next thing I'm going to do, repeat this process for micrometer setting 2. At a setting of 2, the total weight of those 10 charges is 58.46. So the average of those 10, of course, is 5.846. As you recall, the range I'm looking for, I'll use is between 3.5 and 4.5. So I'm well over that range now, so I don't need to go any further this way. So in order to fine tune it, I want to go back. I want to do 0 0.5, 0 0.75. And then I want to fill in these 1.25, 1.5, 1.75. Now I'm not going to do that on camera, so I want to do this, fill this in, and then we'll come back. Well, that took me a little bit less than 10 minutes, but I got a 10 charge average for 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75. So now we're going to go up to the computer, enter these numbers into the workbook to see what kind of linear regression we get. And once we do that, we'll key in some charge weights, see where the predicted micrometer setting is. Then we'll come back here and see how well it works. So we have our workbook open. Let's go ahead and enter our charge weights. Zero is 1.762. We did not capture charge weight at 0.25, but we did do 0.5, which is 2.776. Now, as you can see, it's actually rounding this information. I'm going to go ahead and change the formatting because I want to make sure that what I key in. Is actually correct. 0.75 is 3.286. Micrometer setting 1 is 3.804. Now micrometer setting 1.25. The actual number is 4.316, but I'm actually going to intentionally make a transposition error and enter that in incorrectly. I would say 3.416. The next one is 4.820. The next one is 5.328. And the last one is 5.846. As you can see, even though I have an error up here, there's really nothing that kind of indicates. I've made a mistake. But there are actually two places you can look to see if something is amiss. Down here you can look at the R squared value and look at the note charge weight value should be considered suspect. The R2 is less than 0.995. Well I've got 0.947. So that's a red flag. The other place we can look is actually on the calibration curve itself. Now this is rather large. You won't be able to see it, but I'm going to go to view 100% so we can actually see it. These numbers are the micrometer settings. These are the charge weights. If you look at each blue dot is a data point. If you look at this, you kind of see ones. We have an outlier here. It's from micrometer setting 1.25. So we can go back to 1.25, compare it to our notes, and whoops, we find the error should be 4.316. Now let's take a look at the R squared value. That's a fairly decent one. And if we take a look at the curve, we see things are nice lined up. Now a couple of things I do on this chart is you notice, even though we changed the powder to N310, it's not changed here. You have to manually go in and change it. And if you look at this regression formula, it's actually not for what the data we keyed in. 
What I want to do is delete this, but to do that, we do have to unprotect this worksheet. That is review, unprotect sheet, down in here, and I'm just going to hit the delete key. Okay, to get our regression formula updated and the R squared value updated, we double click a data point. Shows this format trend line. Look at the bottom, display equation on chart, display R squared value on chart. If you uncheck that, it just takes the formula off. If you recheck it, it'll now display the correct one. Close this. Go back to the calibration data. Now this section here, it's saying if you're down in your reloading room and you want to calculate a new one, you don't have to run back up to your computer to do it if you know these values. So if you can print this out and stick it in a reloading room, you can calculate a micrometer setting without running to your computer. Now the formula is the micrometer setting equals the powder weight you wish to use minus B, where B is the y-intercept. And you can find the y-intercept here. And then you take that result and divide it by m, where m is the slope, and you find the slope right there. Now sometimes people ask, can this calibration workbook be used on other powder measures that have a micrometer other than the unique tack? And the answer is generally yes. You go through the same process. You capture charge weights at different settings of that micrometer, enter it here, and have it calculate. To validate it, pay attention to the R square value and pay attention to this regression. So, what we want to do now is, if you will, test it out. I want to take three charge weights, key them into here and we'll see the micrometer setting it predicts that we need to use. And then we'll go back to the reloading room and see how well they fit. So I want to use a charge weight of 3.9 grains, and it's saying we should be using a micrometer setting of 1.05. Then I want to use 4 grains, and it's saying I should use a micrometer setting of 1.1. And I want to use 4.1, and it's saying we should use a micrometer setting of 1.15. So we will use those numbers to see how well the model works. All right, at this point, let's go down to the reloading room. So what I've done is I've set it to 105. I threw five charges, dumped the powder back into the hopper. Then I threw 10 charges, put it in the powder pan, and weighed it. Now I'm showing you still image now, and what you are seeing is the total weight of those 10 charges, which is 38.98 grains which on average is 3.898 grains, and rounded to the tenth, it's 3.9 grains. So the model did a very good job of predicting 3.9. I then set the micrometer to 1.10, and what you're seeing now is a total weight of those 10 charges, which is 40.00 grains. So on average, it's 4.0 grains. So again, the model did a very good job of predicting the micrometer setting for a charge weight of 4.0 grains. And lastly, I set the micrometer to 1.15, and as you can see, the total weight of those 10 charges is 40.98 grains. So the average weight of those 10 charges, and rounded to the tenth, is 4.1 grains. So for those three charge weights, the calibration curve did an incredible job of predicting what the micrometer setting should be. So that concludes this video, and I hope it's been useful to you, and thank you for watching.